that's right. I'm gonna bitch about the Silent Hill movie. Why? Because I love the games, and when I heard this movie was coming out, I was so happy. Silent Hill was always a series that could have been adapted to an amazing movie. But this movie made me so sad. Well, wait, it is starting with the first game's title music here. I mean, that's a good sign for a video game movie, right? Now when this movie was coming out, I heard the story is going to be based on the first game, and I thought that'd be great. That's exactly what I wanted. I love the first game. That game had a great storyline, and all it really needed was to be transplanted from one medium to another. But, alas, no movie adaptation can be that simple, can it? And especially not a video game movie. Cheryl? Is that Cheryl? Nope! It's... Sharon! Sharon! Now essentially this character is Cheryl from the first game and she has her counterpart, Alessa, waiting for her in Silent Hill. So why change the name from Cheryl to Sharon? It's a pointless change that didn't need to happen! Now you're probably thinking... <laughs> Well, if it's such a pointless change, why are you sitting there whining about it? Well, because it's supposed to be based on this damn game, and her name was Cheryl in it! And of course, the main protagonist, Harry Mason, got a sex change and turned into Rose De Silva. This change ended up being pretty silly due to the fact that there's already a strong female character for them to use in the cop Sybil. Sybil Bennett. I'm a police officer from Brams, the next town over. Who they did use as well, but they ruined the possible bond that she and Harry had in the game by making her a female with a still alive spouse. Leading to the next problem. Because they changed the protagonist into a female, the studio ended up wanting a male lead in there as well, forcing scenes with Sean Bean's character, Christopher De Silva. And that's really the problem. All his scenes seem very much forced in there. Actually, Sean Bean's character could be completely deleted from this movie. And you know what? It'd be a lot better if it was! His scenes are very jarring and an interruption to the mood of being lost in Silent Hill. The only thing I kind of liked about his scenes was the police officer he's with was named Gucci. But you'd have to be a pretty big dork like me to even notice that reference. And he's supposed to be dead anyway. Now I'm not going to completely bash this movie as it has a lot of good things going for it. There are some parts of the movie that follow the game very nicely. The visuals in the movie are amazing and pretty much exactly what you'd want to see a real life Silent Hill looking like. The lying figure enemy from Silent Hill 2 looks like it was just taken right out of the game. The transition to the other world is so nice that they ended up using it for Silent Hill Homecoming. Although Homecoming ended up using a bit too much from this movie. Now in Silent Hill, there's three different dimensions to the town. There's the somewhat normal, regularly populated version. The almost empty version with thick fog and snow at times. And then there's the hellish dark version with steel grating everywhere, known as the other world. Though for some reason in this movie, they chose to make the normal version also abandoned due to an underground coal fire, which causes the change of... And it's snowing out this time of year. ...to... Ashes. Now, to me, one of the best parts of the movie is the immediate start with the protagonist chasing what looks to be their daughter into the alleyway. And it even throws some of the crazy camera angles the game threw at you at this point. Going on here. <laughs> However, Rose soon meets up with Dahlia Gillespie, and the character change she has gone through is one of the worst parts of this movie. Even her mother couldn't help. 
even though she loved her baby. Dahlia Gillespie. This was a woman who burned her daughter alive, kept her alive after, just so she would stay in pain and suffering, as it was the only way to try and birth her cult's god. And in this movie, they decide to try and make her a sympathetic character? Oh yeah, that crazy Gillespie lady. Rose explores around the elementary school, which is very neat as that's one of the first areas you have to visit in the first game as well. And it's pretty great where she has to pull the clue out of the janitor's mouth. Reminds me of a lot of points in these games where you have to reach in and grab things out. Some spots a little worse than others. Though some of the characters had the common sense not to bother with it. Oh, forget it. This is way too gross. Who would even think of doing something so disgusting? However, we keep getting the Sean Bean interruption, which is very unnecessary, because they only show that they are in different dimensions of the town. Something we knew from his first scene in the town by the fact it doesn't look the same at all! Crazy old Pyramid Head, he's always good for a laugh. They used to say this place was haunted. I think they were right. I'm sorry, but if I just went through the transition to the other world, almost got my head lopped off by Pyramid Head, I think I might have a bit of a stronger reaction than that. Anyway, Rose and Sybil now meet up with Anna, who is from the messed up cult in the movie, which is another huge mistake. Have you seen this? It's a symbol of our unity. Symbol of our faith. It is the mark of Samael. Don't let it be completed. bunch of cult members running around, which really ruins the solitary feeling of Silent Hill. There were never that many normal people running around in any of the games, and there shouldn't be here either. Cald is completely screwed up in this movie. Instead of trying to birth the evil into the town, they're actually against it. And they're actually a bunch of witch burners for some reason, led by another character who shouldn't exist, Krista Bella. And they turned her into the character that brought the pain onto Alessa because of the belief that she was a witch. Look at this map. Memorize it. Christabella suddenly realizes that Rose's daughter looks like Alessa, and they turn on her. Then Sybil makes one of those pointless sacrifices that the secondary characters sometimes make, and she could easily pull the rod out of the elevator doors well, in the elevator as well, but doesn't. Then she also fires the gun so they know it's empty and proceed to beat her. To death? You think she's dead, but then they show she's still alive, and all they do is burn her to death. That was pointless. I think if she were to have died, it should have been more like in the game if you don't save her. Where she starts to get transformed by the town and Harry's forced to kill her. Makes more of an impact that way, I thought. Rose absorbs the dark part of Alessa and brings it into their church, and kills them all. In the end, Rose
Rose and Sharon seem to transition back into the normal world as they are able to drive at a silent hill. However, upon returning to their house, they are for some reason stuck in this second empty fog dimension. Seems like she got the worst ending possible. I think I'd rather have seen the UFO ending. So, they really just ruined the story of the first game with this movie. I mean, if they felt the need to change it that much, I wish they just made it some other Silent Hills story, I guess. The main thing I do like in this movie are the visuals, though. But I really wish they had spent more time just building up the atmosphere of Silent Hill and the absolute helplessness you'd feel of being trapped in there. And there should have been no safe haven from the other world. Oh, screw this.